How are y'all doing today? I'm doing all right. How about you? I'm good. Y'all like his shirt? <laughs> he picked can, it out. Can you guess if I picked it out or if she picked it out? I may have picked Leave it out. Leave that down below and we'll tell you who's right. And... I mean, I could have done it. She could have done it. It's your guess. <laughs> How y'all doing today? Hope everybody's doing all right. Having a great and wonderful day. Had a great and wonderful day. We come to you from the rabbit area. Again. <laughs> Again. But, you know, you get your new animals in, you know, there's a lot of things to kind of do. And there's a lot of things we, we're kind of wanting to show y'all. We've, we've got a lot of ideas coming in the future with uh, hopefully helping everyone with uh, raising rabbits. And then, you know, also getting y'all's feedback if anybody's more, of course probably way more of an expert than I am we always like to hear or see I guess you'd say the comments down below of saying how bad we you know are messing up and not just so. rabbits anything that we do here on the well, homestead of course, yes. so you know we like our coffee we have a idea that you can use for your coffee well depending on I guess where you get your coffee <laughs> but a couple things to show you this is the new cage we have and then this is the older cage that we had and I guess if you want to be the lovely assistant I will grab the camera grab and the camera show to you. get a little closer all right so the love for our coffee and this hole I actually have something in common this is an old hole that I had cut into the cage. Uh, and I'll show you why that hole is there. And I'll be putting new holes into the new cage. So, and Steve. the other part of our deal is I have this bucket. And I'm gonna show you what I'll be using with this bucket. But let's get first to the holes. One, two, three. Ta-da! Look guys, the solar. Okay, anywho, back to what we were doing. All right, so, coffee. Of course, to do this idea that I've got going, you need to find the coffee that's in obviously a metal can. These are some older cans that we had because Seems like the cheap coffee we find nowadays, it's all in cardboard, so. But if you have some of these old cans laying around, I can show you that I can take this can and make it look like this. Oh wait, like this. The hole is for this to slide into to be a rabbit feeder to feed both cages and it worked out pretty good on our last rabbits we're really hoping it's going to work good on these and I'll show you how I can take this can and make it into this try to do it really quick so it doesn't have to be a coffee can it can be mm -hmm. any large can that you use I guess oh yeah you could grab uh, those what cans of beans or mm -hmm. chili or, or I mean whatever but it, you need a metal one, of course. And they do make coffee in metal cans still. It's just more than what we pay. Yeah, we, 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 you know, you, you can tell this is shopper's value, so <laughs> this wasn't no name brand stuff. Well, yeah, we don't we don't buy the good stuff because we honestly just drink too much of it. So, so. you can use the like the big cans of any bulk items you can get. Tomato sauce, if you don't make your own and you go buy it. I know it looks relatively easy. It is. You can probably figure it out just from looking at it, but just going to show you a few tips and tricks that he does to make it even better. Well, I try to. Anyway, take your lid off, of course. So, you know, just got the little plastic stuff around it, so just kind of cut it off. Comes off pretty easy. And see, like, on these cans, it does make it a little difficult because you've got big, that big lip on there. I guess some of your other cans, like chili and stuff, you know, just be straight. It'd be easier to cut. But So, what I normally use is, is I've got a big pair of tin snips. 
I've got some smaller tin snips to use. Uh, and what I'll do is, is like on this one, you know, it doesn't need to be that tall because you don't need to put that much rabbit food in there. And the reason we do this is because, well, I mean, those other feeders, they are nicer. They, they've got a little screen on the bottom to kind of let the dust out. You got to kind of pull these off and kind of clean them out every once in a while. But, you know, when you're looking at, I don't know, I think we found some cheapos for like, I think they're like $8. And they went up, you know, to 20 bucks or so, you know. So, it's just, I mean, it takes you a little bit of time. It doesn't really take that long to really do. Real simple. And I just did it with simple stuff. I mean, there's other ways you can, I can tell you about when I'm doing this. But I just did this. A real simple simple way so it's free so why spend the money if you don't have and so if, I mean, if you already got the can or thing i mean save yourself you know minimum of eight dollars and going to the store and everything else so anyway on this can you know I'm, i don't really mark anything out because i've got these little ridges so if you got little ridges you can do that or you can measure it out however tall you want it but as you can see i kind of took it down to this, this second ridge down here i use these big tin snips to get through that little lip that's on there. And what I do is I, I cut through there and I go down to that first little ridge there and make that as my line that I'm going to cut. And normally the smaller tin snips work a little better to make that, that cut out. May want to wear gloves. Be a good idea. Matter of fact, you know what? Now that I'm talking about it, how about I actually act like I'm wanting to know how to do something and be safe? Look at there. Put a glove on. So, because, you know, this tin will be sharp. So. On clippers. Grab the right ones. There we go. I'm just using the top of that little line. Alright, so, cut that part off. Now what you want to do is, is, I took this other little lid, made it to where I knew about the halfway point was, and I'm going to bring mine down to this very bottom lip. I just, just making my line to pretty much break. Because that'll be where the part where the food all sits. And then I go to the other side. Can I see? And make another line down there. I've got my lines. That way I know that's where a halfway point is. Because what I'll end up doing is, is bending that from this side. So I'm going to cut this side. Go down. To that little ridge that I'm going to use and then what I'll do is is now I'll cut back to this other line I'm cutting it right on top of this ridge because you know like I said these cans are sharp if I use that as my my line as well and I just bend it out of the way so now what I'm end up doing is is this top edge all the way around the top and this bottom and this bottom you can take you anything to kind of curl over the edges a little bit you can use the wire clippers you can use pliers to try to bend all those little edges I'm going to bend this all over. Kind of go on that line. You can use anything to kind of help make the bend. All right, now, you see I kind of got them all bent over, but now what you need is, is I've got like a little tack hammer, and I've got my vise that I'm using because it's a hard steel surface. You could do this probably on the concrete or a board. Uh, your bench. You can do it on your workbench, you know, to tap it, but 
I don't do any real hammering on this bench because I've got my power inverter for my solar underneath the bench. So I don't want to beat around here too much and it mess up my, my deal. So let me uh, get a little more thinking juice and I'll meet you over at the vise. All right, so we're here over here at the vise. I got a little tack hammer. So it's kind of small to get into the crack. And all I do is I just kind of tap it all flat down real nice. Okay, now it's all flattened down along the edges and along the bottom. You see, now I can I can rub my finger across there and and not worry. Ah! Oh no, nothing. So that way I don't have to worry about hurting myself. Okay, so now we got all that done. So just take it where you had your your mark at. Bend it over. That's where it's going to go. To that other side over here. Kind of eyeball it. That's what I do. Make sure it's straight. And then you can take your other piece and then just. Maybe use something small to get in there a little bit to kind of hold that up there straight so that you can kind of make your bend. Ta-da! Now, there's a couple of things you can do here. I've, uh, on some older ones that I made, of course, they sat outside, so they got, of course, all rusted up because these will rust. I've actually, you know, drilled a couple of holes, put you some pop rivets in there if you want to is one way. I wouldn't suggest doing like a little screw or something because if you put your hand down there, you know, you're going to get caught on that screw. So you don't really want to do that. And you don't want to screw out because, well, then the screw will be poking out. So I would suggest if you, if you want to really secure it that way, use some pop rivets. What works really good also is if you've got some of that aluminum tape laying around. Regular duct tape would work, right? Regular duct tape would work. I mean, you could use duct tape too. Um, it'd probably hold just as well. I just happen to have some aluminum tape laying around. So I thought, what the heck, I'll use it. And I run me a piece to kind of cover about halfway over on the flap and on the can that's still solid. And then I use another piece. I do pretty much about the same thing. I go about the halfway point, but I don't know if you can see that. I'm going to actually overlap this just a hair so that it seems like these two pieces won't kind of shift up and down as easy. So I'm just going to have that to where that little piece is sticking up a little bit. And that way I can kind of fold that piece over kind of hold it into place a little bit better but ta-da free rabbit feeder D D U D I Y DIY rabbit feeder upcycled can upcycled can however you want to do it a couple of ways I'm going to show you is you got these little short bungee cords they kind of work um, a piece of wire I've used a piece of wire for attachment and I'm going to show you that here in a second I would not suggest using anything like string or or zip ties or anything like that because rabbits just going to chew right on through that and you have a can with food all over the ground. So, um, for attachment purposes, a little bungee cord with little hooks on it, little short ones. Metal hooks. Metal hooks. And, or, or you know, decent little piece of wire that's, you know, kind of bendable back and forth all the time. So, all right. Get back down there. Let's turn the power off though. Save our solar. Show you how it hooks into the old one. And I'm going to show you how I'm going to get it hooked up into the new one. So I already had those, that already pre cut out. And the last can I used was a little bit bigger can. So 
And so, just take your little hook, hook it around, hook it around the other side to make it good and tight, and voila! You got a nice little feeder. that you can dump food in. And it's both cages. And it feeds to this cage and this cage. And there's enough room for them to get their little face in there and get some, some food. So, you just take a can. I normally, you know, keep it off the little ground, you know, the first little two inch hole. So, you know, you kind of go up. And I'm gonna put it in between the two cages so you know you're going to want to clip out the first spot there so that you know that you've got that and then you just kind of want to make sure you center it As you know, you have that set. Now you need to, of course, get. You have to cut a couple of pieces going down that center divider. So now we have the hole cut out here, and then it down the back part of the cage, and then that will slide right on into there. And then we take a trusty bungee cord. And see, that's the other thing with these little lips that are in these cans is the bungee cord can kind of slide right there in those little lips. That way, we now have These cute little girls. Now we can take their feed and put it right there in their needle. All right, so we have our new little feeders. Now I need to show you why I have a bucket. You can see now we have these old water bottles. They're kind of nice. But they are a hassle to just keep, you know, filling a couple times a day, uh, screw it, and, you know, those little, those little things wear out too, you know, they kind of have a more tendency of dripping, I think. And the other reason that's why they're all kind of staying together right now is because, well, I only have four water bottles. And if you've gone to the store, when you got to buy these things, we just use these as like backups when we need them because, you know, they're... I don't know, eight dollars a pop, two or something, or more than that. I think I can't remember how much we paid for them, but so I'll show you what I have a bucket for. All right, so what I got here is a little shelf that I can lift onto the edge of this deal over here. Uh, that way it will stay that way. I put another one of my little hooks up in the in the ceiling up here on that beam. So what I did was just real simple. Single hook with a chain coming back with an S hook bent over. And then my bucket. Now to do this bucket. Gotta get you one of these little barbed tipped ends. Uh, quarter inch is what this one is. And I believe it's a three quarter. Uh, male side on this other side. A little rubber gasket. Could be half inch, three quarter, half inch. And then you can see that in there. I have a, it's a slip on one side and a threaded 
other side to where I could thread this to this piece, get it tight with that little rubber gasket so I wouldn't get a leak, and just drill the hole through the bucket. And I left it a little bit off the bottom, you know, just in case if trash or dirt gets in here, it won't go through here because this is how I water the rabbits all the way through. So you want to make sure you get it set up because it's all going to be gravity fed, of course. So you want to have it set up just a little bit higher than the cage. Doesn't have to set up too much, but just a little bit higher. I have some clear tubing this time. Last time I used like a, a, a smaller black tubing. It seemed like it worked pretty good. But I got this because, you know, flow will be a bit, little bit more. I can kind of see if there's any problems through the flow where I couldn't see before. I was kind of a little bit worried about, you know, algae buildup, I guess, in the clear. But this stuff isn't really that expensive for like 20 feet of this stuff. I think it was like $5 or something at Lowe's. Or six bucks, something like that. So, but the reason I also use this as, as well is on Amazon, of course, you know, pretty sure that's where I found it at. These are the uh, waterers. And so they go into the cage. This is a little water deal right here. And it's got a little clip on it. A little clip to the cage and the spring that goes back and holds it into place. You just clip it on. Well, your best bet is to Clip on to a wire over Hi. and just pull it across the spring and then it'll stay right there in place. Can we help you? Can can we help? What do you need? What do you need? What do you want? We're, we're doing watering. Okay. So, I just got me a little piece that I cut because I'm going to stick that on this end. Okay. And, and then... I like the clear hose because you can see when you start getting algae so you can change them or clean them. Change them, clean them. You know, you can get these little wire brushes, you know, almost like what, a little baby bottle brush, but they, they come long, you know, so you, you can just re-clean them. And that's what's nice about these little uh, quick connects because uh, I don't know if you can see it. Ouch. That hurt. Um, it's actually got... These that I found actually have like a lock on it. So, this is a little button in there. And when you put that there, the hose connects into there. And the only way to disconnect the hose is you have to pull that back off push this in and then pull the hose back out so you just take it and see it you can already see it kind of grabs but just push it until it pushes all the way in and you can just pull it back a little bit and that's a lock and that like locks it so that it doesn't come off it makes a good good tight seat the outside is 3 8 and the inside whole hole is a quarter inch. You can grab tape measure, you can do it however you want to, you can eyeball it. Um, just make sure that everything kind of falls going, you know, downhill, that kind of thing. Because, like I said, this is gravity fed, so it's going to, you know, just drip right on in. So, I've got this, because I'm going to run it to this side of the cage. And then I'm going to run another one to this other side of the cage. And so like I said, see it's, it's tight and snug in there. But if I pull that little piece back, it comes right out. Well, and that's how you take the hose off to clean it. That's how you take the hose off to clean it. So they work really great. So just push it in. Sometimes you'll, you know, just give it a little extra push because it goes in there. And just give it a little pull back to make sure it's tightened out. I've gotten three types like I said these are all in a big bolt bag type thing I have the the T's 
which are these. I have a, a Y where it comes in and will go out to two different ones and little elbows. So what it is is the elbows will connect up down this way. Then I'll have this piece, the Y coming down to where it can go down to this side and then go back down to this side. T is going to go above it to keep running down the rest of the cage and then coming out to going into the top of this and then splitting off to go to the two. On the end, of course, it'll start off with we're going to use the T and the elbow. All right, so let me try to finish this up and then I'll show you when I'm splitting them off to the, the two cages. So don't want to bore you with all this other kind of stuff. Okay, real quick, I've, I've cut some little pieces going into the elbow and then going on to the end of these pieces. These are just off a little bit, plus these kind are, they've you know, also got a threading. You could probably thread something in there. Just take your little pair of needle nose pliers and you can kind of shove it down that tubing a little bit and kind of turn the needle nose pliers like you're trying to get it to go into the tubing but it will make it a lot easier then to get that back on there i guess i'm getting a thumbs up from the new feeder well ella's a pig hey you gonna let her talk to you like that huh she's a pig okay so here we go coming from the bucket, of course. Teed off to go to both sides. We got it coming here. And I put a T in here so it can go down to this first cage for Miss Ella. And I got it just curved back across. I'm gonna try to do like I've done before. Try to have something across where it sits on so that they can't really get to it. So you just take your connect, push it in there. And you can see it, it'll, it'll kind of push and then it pushes in a little bit more. And then I have a little piece that I made because now we're going down to these two. So I have a T. This will carry down to the rest of the cage. Then this will go down and supply water to both of these. So then I just put this little short piece in here. Push it all the way in. Take the little Y. Push it in. Make sure they're locked in there. And then for right now, I'm using little zip ties, which is not a, I would not suggest using, but I'm just using them currently just to hold everything up. I'm gonna re replace this with some little pieces of wire. Um, just making sure I get it all set up uh, and lined out right first. All right, got it all set up. Um, sort of boring y'all with me trying to plug it all in. I'll just do a recap on it and show you how it, it's working. So, I don't have my lid on here yet because you definitely want to put a lid on here because you want mosquitoes. Put it on. You don't want mosquitoes, you know, climbing up in there. But it's not an airtight lid. Yeah, this isn't an airtight lid. Air can kind of still get in a little bit. It's, it's pretty good. So, we got it. Coming off, teeing off to go to both sides. And then it comes back to T, comes back down, comes back across with T. And see, we got two Y's to give crud fable. Mm -hmm. And see, they look alike. C comes Okay, before. hold up. Ella, mm -hmm. fable. Right. Carbon, right? Yeah, diamond, right? I did not do any of the naming. I came home and they were named. Go okay. figure. Okay, hold on. So, Ace and then Ace and Blade and Blade. Now, Y A B, B C D E, e F. F, and that's for breeding purposes. <laughs> kind of a little tip, I guess, you know. So, and don't know if we can see in here real quick. 
Yeah, we still have to put that up. And so, you know, they just come up and they can just come up here and chew on it. And water just comes right on out. Real easy. All I gotta do is just barely bite it and, and water comes out real easy. Um, I, I've used, I've, you know, on our last rabbits we used these. They worked, to me, they worked fantastic. And, you know, five gallon bucket, doing, well, we've actually got more rabbits this time doing it. But a five gallon bucket lasted a day or two. You can kind of see they really like, you know, pitting around on their ice packs. I mean, Ace over here is just enjoying all good out of it. Blade's kind of sitting on his. You know. Ella's eating, of course. And of course, Ella's, you know, eating like normal. She really approves of the new feeder, so. That's all she does is eat. Hopefully, if you like seeing us with the love of drinking all of our coffee up and keeping those cans into nice little feeders that work pretty well and showing you what I think is one of the, the better watering systems out there for your rabbits. I mean, I'm pretty sure there's some fancier ones out there, but y'all have a great and wonderful day. Can't wait to see y'all until next time. Later.